Disclaimer. This book may contain content that is considered historically inaccurate or culturally insensitive by modern standards. My hope is that by exploring old literature, we will better understand why people of the past thought the way that they did and understand the influences that shaped their culture. This video is not intended for young audiences. Hi, I'm Morgan, and today I'm excited to read to you from Out of Door Book, which is the seventh book in a series or a collection of books called The Children's Hour, which was published by Houghton Mifflin Co. in 1907. About the Crow by Florence A. Miriam. I was standing in a meadow of rich aftermath lying between a stony pasture and a small piece of woods when a young crow flew over my head, calling softly to himself. He flew straight west toward the pasture for several seconds, and then, as if an idea had come to him, turned his head and neck around in the intelligent crow fashion, circled back to the woods, lit and cawed vociferously to three other crows till they came over across the pasture. After making them all circle over my head, perhaps merely as a blind, he took them back to his perch where he wanted them to go beech nutting or something else. Whatever it was, they evidently scorned his childishness, for they flew back to their tree across the field as fast as they had come. This put him in a pet, and he would not budge, but sat there sputtering like a spoiled child. To everything he said, whether in a complaining or teasing tone, the same gruff paternal caw came back from the pasture. Come along, it seemed to say. To this the refractory son would respond, I won't. They kept it up for several minutes, but at last paternal authority conquered, and the big boy, making a wide detour, flew slowly and reluctantly back to his family. He lit, lit on a low branch under them, and when the father gave a gruff, I should think it was time you came, he defiantly shook his tail and cl cleaned his bill. After a few moments, he condescended to make a low, half sullen half-subdued remark, but when the family all started off again, he sat and scolded some time before he would follow them, and I suspect he compromised matters then only because he did not want to be left behind. The intelligence of the crow has become a platitude, but when we hear of his cracking clams by dropping them on a fence, coming to roost with the hands in cold weather, and, in the case of a tame crow, opening a door by lighting on the latch, his originality is a surprise. A family near here had much merriment over the gambols of a pet crow named Jim. Whenever he saw the gardener passing to and fro between the house and garden, he would fly down from the trees, light on his hat, and ride back and forth. He liked to pick the bright blossoms, particularly pansies and scarlet geraniums, and would not only steal bright-colored worsteds and ribbons, but tear all the yellow covers from any novels he came across. When anyone went to the vegetable garden, he showed the most commendable eagerness to help with the work, being anxious to pick whatever was wanted, from raspberries and currants, to the little cucumbers gathered for pickling. The sight of the big black puppy waddling along, wagging high in an air a in air, a long black tail, and congruously finished off with the tipping of white hairs, was too much for Jim's sobriety. Down he would dive, give a nip at the hairs, and be gravely seated on a branch just out of reach by the time Bruno had turned to snap at him. Let the puppy move on a step, and down the mischief would have come again, and so the two would play sometimes for more than half an hour at a time. Then again, the joke would take a more practical turn, for, instead of flying overhead when Bruno looked back, Jim would steal the bone the puppy had been gnawing. The crow was happy as long as anyone would play with him, and never tired of flying low over the ground with a string dangling from his bill for the children to run after. Another favorite play was to hold on to a string or small stick with his bill while someone lifted him up by it, as a baby is tossed by its arms. He would even hold on and let you swing him around your head. He was never daunted, and when the toddling two-year-old would get too rough in her play and strike at him with her stick, he would either catch the hem of her pinafore and hold on till she ran away, or would try scaring her, rushing at her, his big black wings spread out and his bill wide open. 
one day his pluck was thoroughly tested, hearing loud cause of distress coming from the lawn. The gardener rushed across and found Jim lying on his back, his claw tightly gripping the end of one of the wings of a large hawk that, surprised and terrified by this turn of the tables, was struggling frantically to get away. Jim held him as tight as a vice, and only loosened his grasp to give his enemy into the gardener's hands. After letting go, he submitted to the victor's reward, letting his wounds be examined and his bravery extolled while he was carried about, wearing a most consciously heroic air, it must be confessed, for due celebration of the victory. Oh, and that is the end of About the Crow by Florence A. Miriam. I hope that you enjoyed this story, and I hope that you're having a great day. Bye!